Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Patrick Leahy. I am the sixth president of Wilkes University. I've uh, been in the job now close to two years, and uh, I want to welcome all of you uh, to this live video chat that we're hosting this evening. I'm joined uh, by my colleague, Melanie Wade, who is our vice president of enrollment services and herself a Wilkes alum. Thank you. Welcome, Mel. Why, thank you. What year were you? The... Uh, that would be class of something. <laughs> class of something, time. Something, okay. something, something, something ending at a three. Good evening. My name is Melanie Wade. I'm vice president of enrollment services at Wilkes University. And I'm also a graduate of Wilkes University. And Dr. Leahy and I are here tonight to speak with you as you consider this most important decision. Some of you who have logged on tonight have already made your decision, while others of you have the next eight days to ponder whether or not Wilkes will be your next home. We're joining you tonight from uh, the President's Office here in Wekeser Hall, which is in the heart of our campus here in Wilkesbury. And as I suggested, we're delighted to take your questions. Uh, we'll stay here as long as it takes uh, to get through all of your questions. Between Mel and me, we should be able to, uh, I hope, effectively answer any question that comes our way. Uh, while the questions uh, scroll in, I, I'd like to just uh, offer an opening comment. You know, we're doing this in particular because uh, many of you were not able to make it to our Accepted Students Day, which we call our VIP Day, which is really a chance for us here at this university to demonstrate to you what it is we offer uh, at Wilkes and give you a chance to interact with Melanie and me and, and others to ask any questions that you have. So we've invited any of you who couldn't make it that day to join us this evening. Uh, and our, ho our hope is that we'll try to mimic in some, in some way uh, at least the information gathering that you would have had that, that day back in March. I just want to suggest to you uh, what is unique about Wilkes. Uh, we are, as I uh, say repeatedly, a small university. And we think that there's something really special about a small university. It's a university in all of its glory. All of the programs and the opportunities and the activities that you would find typically at a much larger place, but offered in a small, caring, mentoring environment that's typically found at a small liberal arts college. And we think that combination is really unique, really special. In fact, it's a place where faculty members and students get to know each other and develop lifelong relationships, where coaches and students develop lifelong relationships. In fact, I was with a group of students just the other day. I was invited to a guest lecture at one of their classes. And I asked at the end of the session 15 students, what is it you most love about your Wilkes experience? And to a person, to a person, they said, the small size that allows us to get to know and befriend our faculty and other staff members. Every one of them said that. And I think that that's really a, a hallmark of what we offer here at Wilkes. And we're really proud of what we offer here. So we hope, as Melanie suggested, that you'll give us a careful look here in the last days before the May 1 national deadline. Mel, anything else? Well, sure, one last thing. And while Dr. Leahy, as our president, can certainly answer a lot of questions about practically every aspect of the university, my role here is to represent my staff in undergraduate admissions. And all of you know at least one, if not more than one, member of the undergraduate admissions staff who've worked with you throughout this process. And there's lots more process that you'll have in front of you, things like choosing your roommate, when do I come to orientation, how do I get my classes, and so I'm here in that role representing all of them, but I hope that you will feel welcome to work one-on-one -on -one with all of your admissions staff to let them guide you, not just through your process, but through the entire time that you're here. What we do as a part of the admissions process isn't just part of the admissions process. We know our students when they're here, we go to their games, we go to their performances, their work-study students in our offices. Later on, we go to their graduation ceremonies for their master's degrees and their weddings. 
what we say in the admissions process is a part of what we believe at Wilkes. It's the Wilkes way. And so I invite you not just to have a conversation tonight with me and ask me those questions, but to please be in touch with your admissions counselors who would very much like to hear from you. So let's take some questions. Let's go right to questions. You want to start on the left? Sure, let's start with uh, Allison. What are some of the benefits of choosing Wilkes over a bigger school? Well, I mentioned it uh, a little bit in our my opening comment. Uh, I think, yeah, I'm a father of four children myself. And what I look for in educational opportunities for my kids is what experience are they going to have in the classroom with professors? And um, I think the thing that makes us most unique as a university, as I mentioned before, is you can study a whole range of programs at a place like Wilkes. But in each one of those, you will have an opportunity to study in very small classes and to get to know professors in a, in a very special way in and outside of the classroom. I hear it all the time, professors saying, I was uh, out this weekend uh, whitewater rafting with students of mine. I was just with a faculty member earlier in our environmental and earth science area, and he was just out this weekend with students who were, they were hiking through the mountains here of Pennsylvania, partly recreation, partly educational. And I think that that is unique to a place like Wilkes University, especially compared to larger places. So um, I often use this phrase that uh, we could meet in a tent and we'd be a great university. And the idea behind that is it's not the, the place that's as important as the people. And, and uh, I think we're very proud of the quality of the individuals that we have working here. Uh, that make the experience uh, for our students very, very special. We have a question from Vanessa. What is it like living in a Wilkes dorm? Why don't you take that, well, Al, since I think you did. <laughs> it's very, been a very long time since I've lived in a Wilkes dorm, but I do work with about 50 students all the time in the Wilkes admissions office, and I think that I can still answer that fairly well. You will have a roommate. We would like you to have a roommate. It's a good experience for a freshman to have a roommate. You want somebody that you can meet and that you can share your experience with and that you can bond with, have study time together, have extracurricular time together. But that'll definitely be a part of your residence hall experience is having a roommate, meeting other students on your floor. You'll likely be placed in either Evans Hall or Roth Hall, which is our two communities in which most of our freshmen reside. Those are both um, fairly large residence halls, but they are exclusively freshmen, and you may have an opportunity as an upperclassman to move into one of our mansion-style dorms, or into one of our apartment-style dorms in University Towers, where, again, you would also have at least one, if not more, roommates, but you would live in an apartment style that was built as apartments for the city. They weren't built as college apartments. So you'd actually have a, an experience in a more, almost a luxury type of apartment style dwelling. The mansion style dorms are really unique to the university because if you've been to visit our campus, you'll see that as you walk around campus, a lot of the buildings on our campus are these old great historical buildings, a lot like what we're sitting in right now. And they have the fireplaces and they have the wonderful wainscoting and many of those have been turned into residence halls for our students. And so you can have an opportunity also to live in one of those as well. Anything to add to that? The only thing I'd add is we think that the residential experience here at Wilkes is very important. It's a very important part of the kind of community that we want to build here. Um, we hear it repeatedly time and time again. Alums say years and years later that the best friends that they have they made here as undergraduate students at Wilkes. Whether they're residential students or other students that commuted to and from campus, the friendships that you create at a place like Wilkes will last, last a lifetime. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I have a question from Kayla. Uh, what is the best thing or best aspect of Wilkes University? 
In two years, what would you say has been the best thing, the best aspect of Wilkes University? Yeah, I, well, I already said the people, and, and I, I believe that strongly. You know, I, I, I often say that uh, the individuals that, that work here at Wilkes, they don't consider it a job, they consider it a vocation. That's how committed they are to the experience. We have one faculty member, I'll just give you one of many examples. We have one faculty member who went to undergraduate here at Wilkes, wanted to go into uh, academic science, wanted to be a teacher, professor, and uh, he left here and went to Stanford out in California to do his master's degree and his doctoral degree. Upon leaving Stanford, you can imagine the opportunities that he had uh, before him. Upon leaving Stanford, he contacted Wilkes and said he would like to come back here to teach because of the positive experience that he had as an undergraduate. Um, so with all those opportunities available to him, he elected to come back here. We have an individual who works in our mailroom, Eddie, who's a, who's a fixture on campus. He's 75 years old, and I often ask him, Eddie, when are you going to retire? And he said, I will never retire, Dr. Leahy, because uh, I would miss the student interaction too much. So I, I did one example after another after another of the kind of individuals that you would be uh, working with uh, where you'd be a student here. So. I mean, I could talk to you about these unique buildings that we have. Uh, I could talk to you about the broad range of programs. I could talk to you about the athletic programs and the club activities, all of which we have. But uh, those things shine when you bring uh, a group of individuals together that are as committed to education as our faculty and staff. So that, to me, is clearly the most special thing about this, this university. I would agree. I would agree. I could actually tell a, a, a brief story as well about the people of this university. Several years ago, we had a, a young man who was a student here whose young niece tragically passed away at the age of four years old. And the young man decided he was going to take it upon himself to spend the cash that he had saved for a semester abroad to help with her expenses. And when the university community found out about that, the university community pitched in to replace and then exceed the monies that this young man spent. And it's just an example of a university community that looks out for each other, that looks out for one of their own when one of their own really needs them. And it's always been for me an example of what is so special about this place. So from Allison, we have, is there a lot of student involvement on campus? Well, let me put it to you this way. Uh, every uh, first week of class in the, in the fall, we have a club day. And that's where each of the clubs uh, gets a table to sort of present themselves to the new freshmen and to the returning students. And I think last year we had 88 different clubs represented at club day 88 different clubs represented at club day and that didn't include the uh 16 then 16 ncaa sports that we sponsored now 19 because we've added three in the last uh, year uh, nor did it include the intramural sports activity so um in a word there's a ton of opportunities for students uh outside of the classroom some of which is correlated, if you will, to uh, academic work, so it's uh, co-curricular, others of which are just fun opportunities for students to share their, their passions with, with one another. So uh, it's an it, amazing amount of extracurricular activity, again, for a school of our relatively small size. I'd agree. I'd agree. And it gives you a nice way to, to marry your different interests with what you're doing academically, too. From Allison, are we allowed to pick the classes we want to take for our first semester? Well, actually, Allison, with um, orientation coming up in the next few months, that's a great question to ask. What you'll do for your very first semester 
is you'll identify what you're planning on majoring in. And by and large, there's some courses that, depending on what you're majoring in, you'll need to take this fall. And so knowing what your major is will make sure that you get registered for the courses that you need. And that's going to be very important to lock those courses into your schedule. Beyond that, you'll have a choice of a few classes that will help to satisfy some different requirements. And you'll be able to choose which of those have the most interest for you. Specifically, every freshman has to take a freshman foundations course. And there are all types of really neat topics in these freshman foundation courses that some of them deal a little bit with majors, but a lot of times they deal with very specialized interests. And it's a way for you to get involved in campus, to learn about the ways in which you need to do research on campus or the facilities that you need to use on campus. But beyond that, you'll all tie that into a very specific theme and you can use those themes to match up with the interests that you like best. Let me add to that, if I may, uh, we at Wilkes have a very broad program mix, in particular um, among our professional schools. Um, our, our university is organized around six different schools, a College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, a College of Science and Engineering, uh, a School of Nursing, a School of Pharmacy, a School of Business, and a School of Education. But in every one of those majors, we feel strongly about a general education curriculum to complement your professional curriculum. Because it's our hope that when you graduate from Wilkes that we'll be preparing you not just for the first job out, but for a successful career. In fact, we, we extend that even further to a, a meaningful life, to which we think a liberal arts core curriculum can contribute to. And we know in talking to employers that they not only want really good technical engineers, for instance, or nurses or pharmacists, but they want individuals who can be leaders in those fields, who can collaborate across disciplines. And we think that there's a lot of value uh, in the liberal arts core curriculum in, in preparing you for that kind of successful career. Helps you to be thoughtful. From Vanessa, how's the education program at Wilkes? Well, Vanessa, I'm not sure which area of education you're thinking about, but I'm sure you're aware by now that we have several different certifications that you can take in education. And I think that's part of what's most helpful for students when they look at education with us is that you can, of course, be certified to be a secondary educator or a middle level educator or an elementary educator, but you can also do things very specialized like special education, reading specialist, um, teaching English as a second language. And these are all very niche specialties that can be very um, complementary to you as you seek your educational career. The program is very strong. As a matter of fact, our graduate education program enrolls teachers not just from across the state of Pennsylvania, but across the United States. And we've even partnered with, you're probably familiar with, the Discovery Channel and our education program is a partner with the Discovery Channel in delivering educational programs. So not only have we produced a lot of teachers, but we are the education program that teachers turn to to continue their education. Probably a lot of your own teachers. And I'm pretty sure we're the only school of education in the entire region. School, I think you're right. You know, organized as a school so that we could focus our programming and ensure that our students that want to become teachers get the kind of training that they need in order to be successful teachers. From Caitlin, are there any tutoring opportunities and do we have to pay extra for them? Let me take a stab at that. Uh, maybe you can talk specifically about tutoring opportunities, but one of the things that, that we invest considerably in here at Wilkes is academic advising which is a chance for our faculty and professional staff members in our advising area to work very closely with students to ensure that they're on the right track uh, uh, academically. It also is helpful to them in identifying where their real strengths are and helping them fit into the kind of major that would be a marriage of where we think opportunities are for those successful careers and student passion. Mm -hmm. We think that's where students would be most successful. 
so we have a very broad academic advising. It's been embedded into our whole idea of mentoring here at the university. We, we, we use the term mentoring. It's, it's not just a catchphrase. It's embedded into our very DNA as a, as a university. In addition to that academic advising and mentoring culture, we do have specific tutoring uh, opportunities available to students who need a little bit of extra uh, work in different fields. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and Allison, I'm, uh, Caitlin, I'm really glad you asked that question because one of the, I think the most important things for students to recognize very early in their academic career is what am I really talented at doing and what do I need to work on a little bit? And so we provide tutoring opportunities in many different methods so that that way you can work with it with whatever method is best for you. We have one-on-one -on -one tutoring opportunities. We have study group opportunities. We also have professional tutors that you can work with as well. All of those are free to you. They are all a part of your Wilkes tuition. You don't have to pay extra for them like you do at some other institutions. But one of the most important things is to know that they're provided and that you're welcome to start taking advantage of them from the very first day that you enroll in a class that is not one of your stronger points. And I think that that is a really important thing for any student of any age to be able to acknowledge. For sure. Let me tackle the next one, uh, Melanie. There's uh, a question from Allison. Is the campus safe? And it's a fair question given our urban location yes. here in the heart of Wilkesbury. And I would say to you in a word, Allison and everyone else, yes, it is safe. If you look at our size city versus other comparable size cities anywhere in the country, uh, I think anyone would look at that objectively and say, this is a safe city. But we at Wilkes in particular continue to make investments in our public safety apparatus, if you will, to ensure the safety of our students first and foremost, and also of course our, our faculty and our staff. Uh, so those investments are ongoing. Uh, you know, investments in lighting and investments in uh, say a uh, um, escort, what, what do we call it, the safe ride program, um, and escorts for if, if folks are walking uh, throughout the downtown uh, late, late at night by themselves. So we make those investments uh, continually to ensure the safety of our student body. But I would tell you uh, that I think that we're a very safe uh, environment. There's nothing that I am more concerned about at this university than the health, welfare, and safety of the student body. Uh, so we will continue to be focused on that to ensure that I can always answer that question affirmatively, that yes, it is a safe place. Well, I have nothing more to add to that. Why don't you From Caitlin, that? are there any work-study opportunities? Well, yes, Caitlin, I'm glad you asked. And you may have heard me mention earlier that I work almost on a daily basis with 50 students. Those are students who are work-study students in the admissions office. And they do things from data entry to calling students like yourself. You may have actually talked with one of our students to taking tours of campus. But beyond the admissions office, there are students who work in the library, students who work in the fitness center, students who work in different academic offices, specifically in laboratories when they become upper-class science students. And students can be funded either federally or institutionally. The university also funds students to work on campus as well. Let me tackle this next question from John. Are there plans to update our engineering facilities? Uh, the answer to that is yes. In fact, um, in our College of Science and Engineering, uh, we have plans, well, let me back up. In our College of Science and Engineering, we have already, in the last couple of years, completed the largest, most sophisticated, most expensive building in our history, and that is our new science center, our new Cohen Science Center, which creates opportunities for all of our students in engineering to get the basic science training that they'll need. Mm -hmm. The next step in that process is to uh, completely renovate and revamp our engineering labs so that we can have the only nanotechnology lab in northeastern Pennsylvania, that we can have a bioengineering lab for our new bioengineering program, and that we can have other 
manufacturing labs that allow us to collaborate and strengthen our collaboration with local businesses. So we're in the process of designing that space right now. We're trying to raise the money for it. The more we can raise the money from uh, outside sources, uh, the less we'll need to borrow. And of course, that would be positive in keeping the price of a Wilkes tuition as low as possible. So we'll be working on that, John, and we'll probably be, I hope, completing that project in the next couple years, well within your time here if you were to enroll. Well, and John, congratulations on choosing an engineering degree. Engineering is just on fire these days, and it is one of the most rapidly growing programs on the Wilkes campus. Another question from, oh, another question from John. I know that Wilkes offers a master's degree in bioengineering. Are there plans for a bioengineering undergrad program? We don't have plans for a bioengineering undergrad program. However, John, what I will tell you is that all of our students who are involved in engineering have to do a research project in their final senior year. And that research project can be scoped around what specifically is of interest to you. You can begin to participate in bioengineering research and bioengineering projects while you are an undergraduate student. That would not necessarily mean that you are a bioengineering undergraduate and quite frankly most bioengineering programs are at the graduate level. Typically on the undergraduate level you'll see the more basic engineering degrees like mechanical or electrical or environmental which you would likely be majoring in one of those when you attended as an undergrad. Um, but I do want to reassure you that if bioengineering is a specific interest of yours you can be involved in things like robotics and begin to start exploring that career path for yourself. And furthermore all of the pieces to uh, an undergraduate bioengineering program exist today at Wilkes and you would get rigorous training in physics and biology and computer science, math and of course uh, uh, electrical and or mechanical engineering. One of the great things about being that small university that I mentioned earlier is that this program uh, array of programs is available to you with some flexibility to choose among those to create the sort of degree that you want. We have students repeatedly that it's amazing to me that they not only major in one area, but in, they, they elect to major in two different subjects. Three, there was an individual who a few years ago graduated from this university with four different majors, an effort on his part to help design the program that he wanted as an undergraduate that he felt he needed to be successful as a, as a, uh, as a graduate. So that capability is here and is much easier to navigate given our relatively small size. Mm -hmm. From Kayla, is it easy to switch your major after your freshman year? Well, yes, Kayla, actually it is. And one of the things I will tell you though, if you are feeling a little nervous about choosing your major, is don't. Half your friends who think they know what they want to do are going to change their minds anyway. It's perfectly okay for you to come in as an undecided student. 20% of our freshmen do every single year. And if you do that, you'll take a one credit course in which you'll explore different options that are out there. What are you good at doing? What do you like doing? What are going to be the hot five or ten fields to go into when you finish school in four more years? And so it's perfectly fine for you to take that first year and do that and take a little bit of time to work with a professional. After all, think about it. You work with professionals in every other aspect of your life. Your families go to doctors when they want medical advice. They go to attorneys when they want legal advice. We have professionals who will give you advice about a major. Why wouldn't you want to use that? So please feel comfortable if you are feeling a little unsure about your major. First of all, everybody does everybody does. And secondly, if you think you want to come in undecided, that's fine. But I'll also add that in your first year you're taking a lot of introductory courses and you're also taking a lot of your core classes, or like Dr. Leahy described, your liberal arts courses. Those are courses you will need to take regardless of which major you enter into. 
So it's completely translatable from one field to the other. And I'll also add that if you take a class and you find that you don't like it, I think one of the most important aspects of college, whether this be through an internship or through a class that you take, isn't just finding what you love, but figuring out what you don't like too. And that's also okay. I mean, just to add, I, I love when students come to me early in their college careers and say, I, I don't know what I should major in. I just love that because I think it demonstrates an openness to uh, all different kinds of subjects that they may never have considered. I mean, I myself went to college as a business major, and after a rich experience that I had with an English professor, changed entirely, left the business program, and decided to major in English literature. So I just think I, I have a certain, I feel a certain um, solidarity with the students <laughs> that come and say, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but um, I always feel comfortable at a place like Wilkes that we have the, the, the counseling that you'll need in order to figure it out. And then once you figure it out, I feel very comfortable that we're going to have the program here at Wilkes. So um, I would not be overly concerned at this age if you don't have it all figured out. We'll, we'll help you. I have undeclared days all the time. From Matthew, can TVs be allowed in dorms? Yes, Matthew. You can't bring your toaster oven, but you can bring your TV. <laughs> we also do have, all of the dorms also have lounges, and depending on the size of your dorm, there may be a lounge on every floor, or if you're in a smaller residence hall, you may just have one or two lounges, but all of those lounges also have cable television. From Caitlin, is parking offered for freshmen? Yes, Caitlin, you can bring your car as a freshman. You would need to apply for a campus permit, and um, I, I'm going to guess by your question that you would be living in a residence hall, but freshmen are allowed to bring their vehicles to campus, and when you arrive for orientation, you can apply for a campus parking permit. Let me tackle uh, one I see from Jeremy about uh, whether Wilkes will be starting a men's lacrosse team. Uh, our hope is, uh, Jeremy, that yes, we will be starting a, a men's lacrosse team. I'm not exactly sure what year, but uh, when I came to Wilkes a year and a half ago, I think we, we began a, a dialogue across campus about the possibility of adding athletic programs because we love having student athletes on campus. They uh, uh, often are engaged in the life of the university immediately because of their connection to the team. They often uh, uh, exert the same kind of commitment to their academic work as they do to their athletic pursuits. So we love having them on campus. So in this first year that I've been here, we've added three athletic teams, women's golf and men's and women's swimming, uh, with designs either next year or the following year to look very seriously at the possibility of adding men's lacrosse. We had men's lacrosse here at Wilkes some years ago, and we were quite competitive. And uh, I think we see as, as popular a sport as that is, we see real opportunities for us to add that sport in the coming year or two. We have, if you know our campus at all, a fantastic facility already for um, men's lacrosse. It's just a matter of finding it in our uh, athletic strategy. Mm -hmm. Looks like we have a related question, too, from Matthew. Is there a track team at Wilkes? And that's the other uh, <laughs> sport that we are um, envisioning bringing to Wilkes. Uh, men's and women's, track and field, uh, indoor and outdoor if we can. Now, we have a, some indoor training facilities, but what we would try to do is commit to sending uh, track athletes to uh, winter uh, meets, indoor winter meets, as well as uh, spring meets. We have a little bit of a constraint right now in that we do not own our own track. So we're working now on the possibility of either partnering with another institution that does or uh, partnering with the city of Wilkesbury in, uh, in possible, the possibility of adding a track at one of the, the local municipal parks. One way or another, it's very likely we'll be adding a track and field program as well for men and women. 
But from Caitlin, we have how many years do freshmen have to live on campus? Well, Caitlin, we require that an entering freshman resides on campus for two years, but you may find that you want to live on campus for more than that, which is perfectly fine and welcome. You'll, you'll meet a lot of friends on campus and you'll develop a community here on campus. And that's really the point of a requirement to live on campus is that we feel it's a better environment for you to be in for the first two years. Also from Jeremy, what must be done by May 1st if we want to enroll in the fall? Well, congratulations, Jeremy. Welcome to Wilkes. We, at this time, your first step would be to take care of your tuition deposit, which is your $300 tuition deposit. And you can send that in by check or talk to your admissions counselor and they'll walk you through the steps as to how you can pay that online as well. After your tuition deposit is paid, there's a related question from Kyle about what tasks must be, must be accomplished after making your deposit. You'll then receive instructions about things that you'll need to do, ranging from instructions about financial aid, like how do you get your master promissory note done for your Stafford loans, to how do you choose a roommate, it's actually part of an online selection tool, to what are the steps to get registered for orientation. You'll need to take some placement exams, for example in math or chemistry if you're going to be a science major and you'll also do a preliminary schedule online as well so that that way when you meet with your advisor when you're here at orientation that you'll have kind of a rough schedule that you're just beginning to work out and we can start to get you into your final classes. Is that it for the questions at this point? Okay, well then why don't we wrap up this uh, live chat. I think we've uh, kept you from your homework long enough. <laughs> um, let me just say uh, once again, thank you for taking a few minutes out to, to spend with us. Uh, we were delighted with the questions. I hope you got a little bit more information about Wilkes. And let me just say, I hope that I have a chance to uh, welcome you formally to Wilkes first this summer at our summer orientations and then of course in the fall uh, as a new freshman. I've always said the great privilege of my professional life is to be the president of Wilkes University and we're working extremely hard to build the kind of community uh, that we think makes us extremely special and if you've been accepted here then we think that you have what it takes to, to make it and make it very well at Wilkes so we'd be delighted to have you next fall. Have an absolutely extraordinary college career. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.